Through trial, good knowing advisors, the emptiness of the junior world is able to contain the forms and shapes of the 10,000 things, the sun, moon and stars, the mountains, rivers and the great earth, the fountains, springs, streams, torrents, grasses, trees, thickets and forests, good and bad people, good and bad dharmas, the heavens and the hells, all the great seas, Sumeru and all mountains. All are contained within emptiness. The emptiness of the nature of worldly men is also like this. Good knowing advisors, the ability of one's own nature to contain the 10,000 dramas is what is meant by great. The myriad dramas are within the nature of all pupil. If you regard all pupil, the bad as well as the good, without grasping or rejecting, without producing or defiling detachment, your mind will be like empty space. Therefore, it is said to be great, Maha. Commentary Empty space is not only holds all good things, it includes all bad people as well. Empty space would never say, You bad person, get out of my empty space, good people, come on in. In the same way, you should see good and bad people without being attached to the, to the good or repulsed by the bad. As I have told you before, the bad people have something in them which is extremely good. You should hope that they reform. I have many disciples who do not obey me. I tell them to go south and all day long they run north. I tell them to go east and they go west. Although they disobey, I wait patiently because I know the time will come when they will change. All good and all bad are included within the self-nature. You should neither grasp it nor cast it aside. Grasping and re rejecting are defiling attachments. Sutra, good knowing advisors, the mouth of the confused person speaks, but the mind of the wise person practices. They are deluded men who sit still with the empty minds vainly thinking of nothing and declaring that to be something great. One should not speak with these people because of their deviant views. Good knowing advisors, the capacity of the mind is vast and great, encompassing the domarium. Its function is to understand clearly and distinctly. Its correct function is to know all. All is one, one is all, coming and going freely. The mind substance is unobstructed, that is Brahma. Commentary, the deluded person does not do what must be done, he merely talks. A wise person, on the other hand, always puts principle into practice, not with a head mouth zen, but with constant cultivation. The great master said, you are all very wise, the vast mind pervades the all inclusive drama realm. It is like a mirror. When things come, it reflects them. When things go, it is empty. The true mind knows everything when it is used. To have prana is to have complete understanding and be free of all stupidity. Sutra, good knowing advisors. All prana wisdom is produced from one's own nature. It does not enter from the outside. Using the intellect correctly is called the natural function of one's true nature. One truth is all truth. The mind has the capacity for great things and is not meant for practicing petty ways. Do not talk about emptiness with your mouth all day and in your mind fail to cultivate the conduct that you talk of. That would be like a common person calling himself the king of a country which cannot be. People like that are not my disciples. Commentary Do not seek prana outside your self-nature. Do not make the mistake of using the intellect, the discriminating mind. The self-nature is not meant for small things. The great master said, Do not say, Empty, 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 prana, prana, prana. People who do that are not my disciples. Why? Because they don't listen. I tell them not to get attached to emptiness and they get attached to emptiness. I tell them not to get attached to existence and they get attached to existence. I tell them not to have sexual desire 
and they still do not cut it off. Oh, no problem, they say, slowly, slowly. Sutra, good knowing advisors, what is meant by prana? Prana in our language means wisdom. Everywhere and at all times, in thought after thought, remain undiluted and practice wisdom constantly. That is prana conduct. Prana is cut off by a single diluted thought. By one wise thought, prana is produced. Worldly men, deluded and confused, do not see prana. They speak of it with their mouths, but their minds are always deluded. They constantly say of themselves, I cultivate prana, and though they continually speak of emptiness, they are unaware of true emptiness. Prana without form or mark is just the wisdom mind. If thus explained, just this is prana wisdom. Commentary If you have prana, then in thought after thought, you clearly understand. In thought after thought, you are not confused. In thought after thought, you have no ignorance. Prana is cut off by a single deluded thought. To speak of it as cut off is merely an analogy. Actually, it is not cut off. How could proper wisdom, which is without production or destruction, be cut off? Cutting off merely describes the moment of delusion because at that moment, prana is not apparent. By one wise thought, prana is produced. When you are not deluded or confused, prana is produced. I will give you an example of how confusion cuts off prana. When people say that drinking is harmful, smoking is not good, and taking confusing drugs is bad, and you do not believe it, you cut off prana. If you change, you give rise to prana and true intelligence. When someone tries to teach you, but you refuse to understand or believe that is delusion, in short, delusion is to know clearly that something is wrong, but to go ahead and do it anyway. Such delusion cuts off prana. The great majority of people in this world are deeply deluded, for they do not see prana and they do not know how to cultivate it. Their mouths speak about wisdom, but their actions betray their stupidity. They talk about prana, saying, emptiness is prana. There are 20 kinds of emptiness related to prana. You should empty everything. But they do not know true emptiness. Perhaps they understand a little of the sutras or recite a few lines of a mantra. But even though they speak, they do not change their own forms and therefore do not recognize true emptiness. You must give up ignorance, bad habits, forms, and do and obstructions if you are to understand true emptiness. Prana without form or mark is the wisdom mind. Wisdom has no form or characteristic. Didn't the sixth patriarch just say that prana is neither long nor short, neither square nor round, neither big or small, nor is it green, yellow, red, white or black? What is it then? It is the wise mind, free from ignorance, which knows the right dharmas from wrong dharmas. Sutra, what is meant by paramita? It is a Sanskrit word which in our language means arrived at the other shore and is explained as a part from production and extinction. When one is attached to states of being, production and extinction arise like waves on water. That is what is meant by this shore. To be apart from the states of being, with no production or extinction, is to be like freely flowing water. That is what is meant by the other the shore. Therefore, it is called paramita. Commentary to reach the other shore is to be separated from birth and death. This shore is birth and death. The other shore is nirvana. To go from this shore to the other, you must cross the great sea of afflictions. Because there are afflictions, there is also birth, death, and nirvana. If you have no afflictions, then birth and death are nirvana, and nirvana is birth and death. Birth and death and nirvana are nothing more than names. The absence of birth and death is nirvana. If you have no afflictions, then in the midst of birth and death, you have no birth and death. 
We are born and we die because of affliction. This is very important and you should all remember it. Birth and death exist because of afflictions. Affliction exists because of ignorance. And ignorance is simply whatever you don't understand. What don't you understand? What do you understand? Knowing you do not understand is ignorance. Knowing you do understand is prana. There is just that small difference. When one is attached to states of being, production and extinction arise like waves on water. What is meant by the other shore? What is nirvana? Nirvana is like water without waves. When the wind rises, the waves swell. The wind of ignorance, the waves of affliction are this shore. To be apart from states with no production or extinction is to be like freely flowing water. The principle is clear the nature is like water, the water of wisdom. When there are no waves, there is no birth and death. We should work hard to understand why our minds have so many extraneous thoughts. These thoughts are like so many waves. Without them, there would be no production or extinction, no birth or death. With production and extinction, you are on this shore. But if you separate yourself from production and extinction, you are like a freely flowing water, permitting the universe with wisdom. That is what is meant by the other shore. That section of text is very useful. It was a little thought that, and you will understand it and derive it from it inexhaustible benefit. Sutra, good knowing advisors, deluded people reside with their mouths, but while they reside, they live in falsehood and in error. Where there is practice in every thought that is the true nature, you should understand this drama, which is the prana drama and cultivate this conduct, which is the prana conduct. Not to cultivate is to be a common person, but in a single thought of cultivation, you are equal to the Buddhas. Commentary, in each thought, avoid doing stupid things. If you understand this dharma, you realize that prana is to refrain from stupidity. What is stupidity? Doing what you absolutely should not do. Most important is the matter of sexual desire. You absolutely should not give rise to sexual desire, for when it arises, you get confused and forget everything. You forget prana, you forget paramita. At that time, you cannot even recite their names. You become involved in it and no longer pay attention to principle. Although it is the stupidest thing one can do, people still like to do it. They want to be stupid instead of wanting to cultivate the prana of drama. If you want to cultivate and practice prana for even a single thought, you must cut off desire and cast out love. The absence of sexual desire is the practice of prana and in a single thought of cultivation, you are equal to the Buddhas. Sutra, good knowing advisors, common people are Buddhas and affliction is body. Past thoughts deluded are the thoughts of a common person. Future thoughts enlightened are the thoughts of a Buddha. Past thoughts attached to states of being are afflictions, and future thoughts separate from states of being are Buddha. Commentary Where does the Buddha come from? He starts out as a common person. Yes, the Buddha was a common person who cultivated and eventually achieved Buddhahood. Why are we common people? Simply because we do not cultivate the prana dharma. Our nature flows out and becomes emotion. Our emotions flow out and become desire. Common people are that way, but the returning of desire to one's own nature so that one is unmoved by ignorance, that is the Buddha. Affliction is a body. Without affliction, there is no body. So you say, then I will not get rid of my afflictions. I will keep them. If you keep them, they are still afflictions. And afflictions are just afflictions. You should use a scientific method to temper your afflictions. How? Actually, this change is no change. It is merely a returning to your original nature. My hand, for example, has a palm and a back to it. 
the back of the hand represents the affliction and the palm represents the body all you need to do is flip it over and everything is all right there is no addition or subtraction required just turn it over if you do not turn it over you are off by just that margin and affliction is affliction and body is body but as soon as you turn it around affliction is body and birth and death is nirvana i have often spoken of this but by Kali, i said affliction is body eyes is water birth and death and nirvana are empty dharmas if you understand then dharmas are also empty if you do not understand, then there are still dramas. You should understand that pupil and dramas are both empty. Past thoughts diluted are the thoughts of a common person. Future thoughts enlightened are the thoughts of a Buddha. With stupid thoughts, you are a common person. With wisdom and enlightenment, you are a Buddha. Past thoughts attached to states of being are afflictions. And future thoughts separate from states of being a body, a being a body. When thought is attached to states, affliction arises. You may think, this is San Francisco. It surely isn't the same, the same as New York. Fundamentally, San Francisco and New York are the same. They're both big cities, but you make distinctions. In San Francisco, you say there's no snow, but New York has lots of snow. This is just the discriminating mind. Basically, the two cities are the same. If you are unattached to states of being, you will not have so much affliction. If you do not use your discriminating mind, there is no affliction. Past thoughts which were attached to states discriminated between San Francisco and New York and therefore affliction arose. A later thought which is unattached makes you say, they are empty. San Francisco and New York are the same. Why bother to discriminate one from the other? If you do not discriminate, that is body. It is easy to speak that way, but putting down on discrimination is another matter. That is difficult. When you understand that kind of state, there's no home and no country. There's nothing at all. This is, a, this is to produce that thought which is nowhere supported it is also to produce that body which is nowhere supported not dwelling anywhere you can manifest a body that can go everywhere is this not wonderful drama it is nothing less than body there's no need to sigh if you can be enlightened then you are enlightened if you can't be yet then slowly slowly you can be Nature in Samadhi demons defeated, everyday happiness, false thought not arising everywhere, peace. When your mind is in Samadhi, there's not so much false thinking. Every day you are happy and at peace. Why are you unhappy now? Because of false thoughts. Without false thoughts, every place is the land of ultimate bliss and you can produce that body which is nowhere supported. So